inspired on Liberty Radio. Hello and welcome to Be Inspired. Tonight we're going to be talking about a mystery. What is the mystery? How come everyone prays the following words, Lord, use my life. Use me. I want to be used by you. But many of those who say these words, who say this specific prayer, never get to, to be used by God. Why is that? You're going to find out and we're going to show you now a video of the VYG Evangelizing for the Last Door uh, event in Walthamstow last Saturday. In fact, tomorrow morning we're going to be together in the same faith evangelizing. All of us will meet here in the battalion meeting 10 o'clock and the same thing will be in all the churches. You are our guest to be evangelizing together with us. Let's see this, this wonderful video of the VYG hard at work saving souls. We'll come back to talk about what we just said, why many of those who say, Lord, use me, never get to be used by God. up to the event? What's your plans? Are you just going to come alone? Are you planning to bring people? And why? Why are you here today? Why did you wake up today to come and join us? No way. I'm not planning on coming alone. I'm definitely going to go after three people. And in fact, I've already got two people confirmed that they are coming and I'm going to go for more because this is literally the last door. A lot of doors that people have tried, they don't work because they can solve your problems for a bit, but it doesn't last forever. But God lasts forever. And so this is what people need. So... For that. Why are you so passionate about this event and the work that we're doing here today? Why are you here? Why did you wake up on a Saturday morning to be here? Because this place changed my life. Like literally, without this place, I'd be dead or in prison. I think it's as simple as that. So I'm giving back the same place that saved my life. I've got to bring more people to it. Um, because obviously I've been coming to the church for a few years now um, and I know what it's done for me. I know what it's done in my life and I want other people to know that it's possible for it to happen in their life too. So obviously coming up towards this event, we're just going to call more attention. We're going to invite as many people as possible because there are some people who, you know, they are at the point where they are at that last door, but they don't know what that last door is. So we're telling them this is the last door and this is the one where you're going to find the answer. So there we go. Excellent, thank you. Hello everyone, we are here in Wolverhampton working for the Last Door event which will be taking place on the 3rd of October at 10 a.m. This event is something that you don't want to miss out. Maybe you've tried going to so many different places and you've been looking for that one opportunity to change your life. This could be that Last Door. So make sure you join us on the 3rd of October, 10 a.m. at your Universal Church because this is something you don't want to miss. Take care. Welcome back. I have here pastors with me in the studio, pastors who one day they made a prayer also. They also said, Lord, use me. And we have to ask why so many people that say this prayer, and in this group of people we have uh, youth who want to serve God on the altar, we have uh, assistants, we have, you know, we have a long list of people. When a person says, Lord, use me, this prayer has to be followed by an action. You can't say, or we can't say, Lord, use me, and then go about our daily life thinking about our personal plans and projects. If I want, if I make a prayer saying, Lord, use me, and that's indeed what I want, that's my desire, that's the burning passion inside of me, then this must be followed by action. 
And, and we see, if you, if you remove God out of the, the equation, you can see that this happens a lot with, for example, athletes. We have people who say, uh, I want to be the best tennis player, the best footballer, the best runner in the world. And they follow that, that statement by dedicating their lives to that. And while others are partying on the weekend, these people are resting because they have a, an early training session on Saturday or Sunday. While others are eating whatever they want, they are sticking to a strict diet. So they're not just saying, I want to be the best athlete. They are becoming the best athlete and they show that by the sacrifices they make. And to serve God is the same thing. You know, a, a lot of things in our real life and our personal projects, there is a parallel with those things and the things of God. I, if I want God to use me, I also have to learn to live a life of denial, of sacrifice. Even God could not escape the life of sacrifice. He sacrificed His Son. So why do we have so many people who say this prayer, I want to be used by God, and then they never get to be used by Him. The simple reason that after the prayer is over, they go back to their video game, they go back to their, their, their binge watching of, of series, to their whatever they're going to do, to follow uh, a superstar, to, fall, to have someone in this world as an idol. And then, that's it. It ends there. It ends with empty words. But we have people, Pastor David, uh, Pastor Ade, Pastor Joseph, we have people who have <coughs> said that prayer and following that prayer, they made changes to their life, to their dreams, uh, so that they could serve God. I, I'm going to use here Pastor David as an example because, Pastor David, you you either, forgive me what I'm going to say here, but don't, don't be offended, I hope you're going to understand what I'm saying, you are either the, the smartest person in, or one of the smartest people in, in the universe or you are one of the dumbest. <laughs> Let me tell you why. Don't, don't be offended. <laughs> don't start sending emails here to the, to the program. Let me tell you why. Because, for example, you've got a, an Oxford University degree yes. and you put that degree in the trash and you became a pastor because you said, I want to serve God. So you are either one of the smartest, if you look at this from a spiritual perspective, right, Pastor? Most, most definitely. Then if you look at it from a spiritual perspective, you are very spiritually intelligent, spiritually smart. But if you look at it from a, a, a career perspective, from a, um, a parent perspective, I'm sure that some, the decision you made was not very popular with certain members of your family because not many people get a, an Oxford University degree and you threw that in the trash. How, how did certain people in your family react when you gave that up to become a pastor? They, they didn't understand. Not everyone understood. Not mm -hmm. everyone, of course some did, but not everyone understood because it's hard to understand, Bishop, to mm -hmm. be honest. Because like you said, for the world standards, this is something that people will fight for. People long to have the opportunity to go to, even to go to university in general, any university. So to go to a university like, like, like the one I went to and then to kind of just despise it completely, apparently, apparently, is something that people are never going to understand, Bishop. There, there are people mm -hmm. that, until today, I'm sure they, they think, what have you done? Yeah. What have you done? Uh, because, you know, uh, I imagine, I, I, I don't know, but I imagine that just the fact that you have the name uh, Oxford graduate in your CV, yeah. that opens a lot of doors. It does, which <laughs> it, it, re it really does. Because I, I remember when I was applying for work before, it, it's, it, it, it will ne you'll never be able to kind of get away from it. As soon as people see Oxford or they see Cambridge or they see one of these, these universities on the CV, they immediately think within their minds, that's that, it. You're, yeah, this you're person, great. this person can do it. This yeah. person can do the job. This person yeah. can, can make it happen. Blah blah. So you you threw that uh, degree. You 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 despise that, because one day you said, Lord, I want to use you, and 
And having a degree or not means nothing for you to be used by God. You actually have to empty yourself of your human knowledge that has not... I mean, some human knowledge is important for the work of God, but, you know, for example, what degree do you have, Pastor Ali? I don't have a degree. I, you don't have a degree, yeah. Pastor I was about Ali. to start university to get a degree. You don't have a degree. But uh, Pastor Joseph here, Pastor Joseph, what degree do you have? You, you have the crazy degree. <laughs> I got crazy, I never finished. <laughs> because you were like the, the gathering. Ag again, yeah. please understand, I'm not saying this in a derogatory manner, please. Uh, we're, we're all family here. It, which, we're just trying to explain to you that, you know, wh whatever sphere of society that you come from, the 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 step after saying the prayer, I want to serve God, has to, has to be the same. And please, uh, you know, w w some people have said to me, oh, Bishop, I, I, like apologizing they have a degree. You shouldn't apologize you have a degree. If you have a degree, make good use of it. Be the best that you can be. And you can serve God there in your company, in your business in your job we're just using the examples of the pastors because that's who we have here in the studio but of course you know this is not exclusive to people who want to serve God on the altar you can have a, a company a business you can work for someone and you can make a prayer you can say a prayer Lord use me and then you can be used in that company to save souls but the bottom line is after you say that prayer the reason why many people are not used by God is that they make the prayer they say the prayer and then they don't do anything afterwards to be used by God. They have short memory, Bishop. They say it and after they forget it. They don't mean it that. You know, like you say, my case when I came, the only thing I want to do is the work of God. From day one, Bishop, I entered in the church. I saw the pastor on the altar said, this is what I want to do. And I was still a bit crazy when mm -hmm. I said that. I said, I want to get healed and I'm coming to the altar. I don't want anything out of my life anymore. And I, I used to work because I stopped school, but after I was a carpenter. I used to work far away from the church. I quit the job just to work close to church, you know, after, of course, I got healed and then I would start working because I want to be a pastor, to be closer to the church because of the UBI classes and things like that. I was not looking at, after the money anymore because I said, no, my, what I want is the altar. That's why it makes, makes no sense for me to be far receiving more, but that's not what I want. I want the altar. You know, so uh, and we know that many people who are connected with us now, they will not necessarily be on the altar, but you, you can still be used by God. For example, when you, when you start your day, now we're doing the 100 days of, of planting, right? So you, you start your day with a prayer and you say, Lord, let your will be done. We shared Bishop Renato's video today on the church's social media, on my personal page, of him explaining the, 20, the, the, the 100 days in, 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 a, in a short video. And you start your day saying, Lord, let your will be done in my life. Use me today. So when you leave, when you leave the door of your house and you're going to go to your work, you're going to go to do what you need to do, you have to allow yourself to be used there where you are because sometimes uh, there are people there in the bus on your way to work that need to receive help. Of course, you're not going to be talking to every single person you see because then you're not going to get to work on time. But God perhaps sometimes puts certain people that you look in their face, you see their suffering. And, and, and God is just counting on the person who said, Lord, use me to do something to help those people who are suffering. To, ah, Bishop, I'm going to give them money. Yeah, but you give them money. And what about their soul? The help is to bring the person to the presence of God. That's what's lacking sometimes. Following the prayer is the person living their day being available to be used by God. Most definitely, Bishop. As you were speaking, Bishop, I was also thinking about the idea that people may have. It, it sounds good in their mind. Look, I, I want to serve God. They may even be honest in what they're saying. But the, the problem that I also have noticed is that people have an addictive habit of being incompetent. So they, they say one thing and it's done half-hearted and they, they forget it completely. They may even start, but then they, they draw back. So it's an addictive habit whereby they do things anyhow. They don't, they don't follow up in what they do. And that's why God can't use them, Bishop. Mm -hmm. uh, again, please, uh, Pastor Adi said here, 
the word incompetent, but it's not, uh, again, in a derogatory no, no, manner. No, no, not at all, Bishop. It's just in, in a person not following up with their decision. You know, um, I, I hope, I hope that you who are watching this program, and you've made this prayer many times, you pastor, pastor's wife, assistant, member, I hope you understand that what God requires of us when we say, Lord, I want to serve you, is, is a, a degree of sacrifice. It's putting your will to one side. You know, we've seen cases of people who wanted to, let's talk about the altar, people who wanted to serve God on the altar. But the moment, for example, that they heard that they were going to go to another country, a difficult country, then they changed their minds because they were, they were wanting to serve God, Pastor David, on their terms. Yeah. And, and, and actually, let's be honest, here in, in England, England is one of the, the most successful countries in the world. If you become a pastor in England, which is the case with both of you, for example, if you ever go to another country, in, in terms of standards of living, it's all downhill from here, right? <laughs> Again, not saying other countries are, are bad, we're just saying if you compare it to standards of living, if you compare it to the things that are available to us here in England, we have everything available to us, right? But sometimes the person doesn't think that once they ask God to be used on the altar, we're now talking about those who want the altar, there, there's a very big probability that if one day you are sent somewhere else to do the work of God, you will go to countries where things are more difficult. We have pastors who were raised here in the UK, for example, who we have, uh, we have a pastor here from the UK, for example, in Fiji. We have a pastor here from the UK who will be going to Papua New Guinea. Wonderful countries. In, in terms of preaching the Word of God, it's a blessing. You speak and, and hundreds of people come, but things are difficult, things are tough. We have pastors here who were raised in this country who are in Africa. Again, no country is worse than the UK, but we're saying in terms of what is available to us, if you talk about the... the, the am I making sense? You are, Bishop. Pastor David. It's, it, this is not a problem, Bishop, for the person who really means this prayer. Because when a person really means this prayer, my God, use me, what they're actually saying, Lord, I don't want to think about myself anymore. Forget about myself. My needs, my career, my goals, my dreams. What, does the per what do the people around me need? They need salvation. They need mm -hmm. help. That's why when I go on a bus, I'm not just thinking about oh, what I have to do today, what can I do tomorrow and all my plans. No, I'm thinking about this person. I wonder, if, I wonder what they're going through right now. Maybe I can give them a leaflet of the last door. I'm constantly thinking about other people. That's, that's me really meaning the prayer. And that's why even if you've gained a lot in the world, you're not afraid to lose it because you're not thinking about yourself anymore, Bishop. That means you're ready for everything. If it means you go to a difficult country where you personally are not going to be able to live the standard that you're used to, it's not a problem because mm -hmm. you're thinking about the people you're going to save. You're thinking about the people that are there, the souls that God can use you to make a difference in their lives. So I want to invite you to do something different from today. If you are serious about the prayers that you've said many times about being used by God, then start living your day, start your day differently. When you leave, when you say that prayer, when you leave your, your home to go to work, you don't have to be on the altar to serve God. You can serve God there where you are. So when you leave your home, when you go to work, when you go to do your, your job, whatever you're going to do, ask God, Lord, today put one person in front of me. Put one, one person in front of me that I can speak about you that I can give my testimony. This is when a person says that they want to serve God and they start being used by God. So to summarize what we said, why many people who say, Lord, use me, why many of these people are not used by God? Because they say this prayer, but they don't make their lives available. They don't want to sacrifice to be available for God to use them. But if you want to change that, we're going to talk to God right now. We're going to watch the, a testimony of the last door and we will come back to pray for you who have this desire in your mind, in your heart, this burning passion to be a servant of the living God 
from today. Let's watch this testimony. We'll come back to pray in just a moment. I try uh, many things. I've tried a party hard. I've tried doctors. I've tried uh, sleeping around to receive my deliverance, but found no answer until I try the last door. The biggest problem was depression, or postnatal depression. So after I gave birth, I found myself trapped in this emotional environment that I couldn't come out from it. I was uh, in a relationship that brought me a lot of pain. When I became single parent, uh, all this, the frustrations of that relationship started coming up and I wasn't able to give love to my son. I wasn't able to show him a reference as a parent, and even myself, I was starting having suicidal thoughts as well. It's when I start drinking, it's when I start party hard. Things start getting serious because I had a child to take care. I wasn't even able to understand what was happening to me at the time. It was then when I realized I need to seek the help of the professionals. Because I was behaving in a weird way, like drinking more, kind of to pretend to people that I was okay, trying to find ways to show people that I was in a happy lifestyle. So I get in touch with my GP to try to find a solution for my problem is when I've been diagnosed with anxiety and depression and he prescribed me with tablets. If that didn't work, uh, the next stage would be to see someone more specific to deal with my depression and anxiety. When I left uh, the GP, I was really concerned in terms like, uh, what is that? What is depression look like? Is when I see the tablets I had in my hands and I realized this is serious. In that period of time, I decided I'm not taking the tablets because I believe somehow I will make it through. So when I used to see the doctors, I would say, uh, I'm okay. I don't need any more to see them. In that period of time is when I met the church. I found out about the church through a TV program. In the meetings, I learn how to value myself, how to deal with my emotions, how to dig into the roots of my problems and uh, fix them. I followed the advice of the pastors. They was guiding me each step of the way. I made vows, I made campaigns. I was obeying above of everything. And gradually, I started seeing the results. The inner peace started to be uh, showing up. My relationship with everyone around me, my son, my family, as a sister, as a mother, as a daughter, I was starting getting the results of my prayers. It's been a great learning since all these 12 years. I cannot put in words what I've learned here, the only way I can do is just spread this love that is in me throughout the people that approached me on my journey. The way I am today, the things I achieved since that time, and the things I'm about to do next is all based in all the learning from the UCKG. Indeed, was the last door. I'm very happy. I want to be here. I want to bring the whole world to this place, little place where I found God. My Lord, we are all guilty, all of us, myself included, of having said this prayer. And even though we, we may even generally put ourselves available for you to use us, but certainly there were moments, whether it was one or two or some moments, that we didn't make ourselves available because we wanted to be exclusively free to do something we wanted. And then there are many who say this prayer, Lord, use me. But they were too busy with their plans and lives 
and achievements, to even think or ask you what you wanted from them, how you wanted to use them. My Father, I ask you in the name of the Lord Jesus, that wherever there is someone who is sincere, who in their minds, in heart, they want truly to serve you. Yes, they have plans. Yes, they have a family to look after. But they want also every day of these 100 days, every day of their lives, they want to be used by you. That from today, Lord, you will prepare situations where this person may reach out to a soul every day. We have the last door event available to us right now and we have found the last door. But how many people are still looking for an answer, looking for a solution in this world, my Lord? People like the testimony of Bishop Carlos' family that we heard here a couple of days ago. People who have done the exact same thing because they thought that this would change their lives. And all they need is for someone to stop, to stand in front of them and say, hey, there is an answer, there is a last door. Father, make us this person. Do not let us be distracted with the myriad of things that the world has available for us to try. The endless uh, amount or endless list of things the world makes available for us to try. We don't want to be wasting our time with that, my God. We want to be a servant that you can count on. In the name of the Lord Jesus, my God, we surrender your people now in your hands. Those who truly want to serve you, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I believe that what you heard here tonight can be life-changing if you allow it to be. Invest in these 100 days. You know, let's invest in feeding our spirit, in giving time to read the Word of God, and not only to read, but to meditate. Sometimes you read. Sometimes we read, but then we finish reading, we go and we do something else that has nothing to do with that and we're too busy to think about what we read. Let's read and meditate. This Sunday, remember, we are going to consecrate all the healthcare professionals in our churches, uh, on the altar of our churches. If you are a healthcare professional, it will be a blessing for you to receive this protection, the hand of God over your life. Don't miss it. May God bless you abundantly. Bye-bye. How many doors have I tried to open, let down by the things I put in my hope in? These things never seem to go to plan. Pain can't be solved by man. I'll give God a try and open up the door. Look deep inside, it'll show me something more A peace that surpasses all understanding I'll give God a try and open up the door Look deep inside, it'll show me something more A peace that surpasses all understanding Please help me, I'm yours now As I walk through this door Store. I am found. You say I am the door. When I enter, my soul is safe. That's all my troubles and my sorrows behind. Your pastures I'll find. 
I'll get the story go It may take some time, but I definitely know This will change my life, I'm prepared to surrender And put my all in Please help me I'm yours now As I walk through this door I am found Oh, please help me I'm yours now As I walk through this storm I am found Walk through, walk through, through the door Walk through, walk through, through the door I couldn't get the message, that's why I gave it all That's why I walk through, walk through, through the door Walk through, walk through, through the door Walk through, walk through, through the door I gotta get the message, that's why I gave it all That's why I walk through, walk through, through the door 